We live in dog sledding country. You can't use horses easily up here. The bush is too dense. There's too many lakes. Winters are too cold. But the right kind of dogs adapt perfectly to this country. Dog teams are one of the things that help the Inuit and Dene people to survive in the north. Humans domesticated dogs from wolves between 14 and 30,000 years ago, it's thought. Uh, archaeological evidence indicates dogs have been used to pull sleds in Canada probably since the Thule culture, uh, culture which was about a thousand years ago. <coughs> Until the airplane came north, almost everything that moved in the winter up here was moved by dogs. The RCMP were famous for their dog team patrols. Many intrepid priests and nuns traveled thousands of miles by dogs to visit parishes. The post office had mail runs spread across the country. At one point, the Hudson's Bay had more than 20,000 dogs to support the fur trade at its, at its outposts. Dogs were a vital part of every northern community. Hunting, trapping, and travel between com communities were all done on dog teams until the snow machine became reliable and popular in the 1970s. You have to excuse me, I've got a cold and my voice is going. Um, when I came north in 1978, there were still a few working dog teams in Detta, Delo, and the Woodyard. One of the first I can remember was Fran Herkham's, and she very kindly let me use this picture. It's one of my favorite dog team pictures, her team on Campbell Lake with her faithful lead dog, Pogi, up front. Just beautiful lighting in that picture. Racing dogs was a popular sport and one of the main features of spring carnivals in many northern communities. But now people were using or keeping teams just to race. Some people have what I called hog, hobby teams, or they use dogs in the tourism industry. But by the late 70s and early 80, 80s, true working teams were disappearing. I'm a hobby dog sledder. <clears throat> for over 30 years, I've kept a team to travel and explore the land around here. I do it for fun, and it is fun. I've dog sledded over 42,000 kilometers, or more than runs, once around the world. That's thousands of hours standing in the cold, staring at dogs' butts, and I love it. <laughs> at first, neither my wife, Aggie Brockman, or myself had any intention or interest in having a dog team. But we started hanging around people with teams, and one day we had two pups, and then we had four dogs, and finally a working team. We weren't dog sled racers or trappers. We were hobby doggers. It became an addiction. Think of a beautiful day. It's, maybe, uh, it's a beautiful way to explore and enjoy the winter. You, you travel at a reasonable pace, fast enough to get where you want to go most of the time, <clears throat> but at a pace that lets you appreciate the country you're traveling in. It's quiet and peaceful, and it allows you to see much more game than a snow machine. On the team, we've seen rabbits, mink, marten, otters, caribou, wolves, coyotes, lynx, and wolverines. We've traveled across Great Slave Lake to Lutzelke and beyond. We've sledded to Wati. We've fallen asleep in the sled and woken under swirling northern lights as the dogs stopped at our cabin. Dog sledding is about communication. There are no reins between you and your lead dogs who can be 60 feet away. Verbal commands control the team and they vary from musher to musher. For my team, G or go G means turn right. Ha or go ha means left. Ha come means you turn, and woe means woe. <laughs> Every team depends on a good leader. This is Trigger, the best lead dog I've ever had. The lead dog has to keep his lines tight, which makes the rest of the team keep theirs tight and avoids tangles. They have to listen to the commands, be able to break trail if there uh, isn't one, and find the trail home again. They have to want to go, and Trigger definitely wants to go. It's a still sunny minus 35 day. You're breaking trail across the lake. Your dogs come down the bank and almost disappear into a cloud of powder on the, on the lake face. A huge sun dog hangs overhead. You hear the dogs breathing, the harness bells, and the whisper of the sled runners. Behind you is a perfect vapor trail from the dog's breath hanging in the air. That's a good day on the land. Uh, now I think I'll just tell you about one dog we got. Um, we got this eight-week-old puppy, took him home, and later that day, Aggie took him for a walk behind the, squad, the racket club up in the hills there. A strange dog came out barking at them, and the pup got scared, and he ran off. We scoured the neighborhood and the bush, had no luck, couldn't find him, so we headed home. 
got to the house, there he was, sitting by the dog yard gate. So I named him Homer. <laughs> dog teams evolve. A couple of years later, Homer was traded to another musher. Sometime later, due to a failed romance, that musher moved to Vancouver Island. This was obviously not dog sledding country, and the musher was forced to disperse his team. Some were sent back north, and Joe Kelly from Kimmick Kennels found a home for them on a working team in Taktayaktak. I'd forgotten all about this, and years later, I had a job working with a film crew in Tuck. The director wanted, his, wanted dog team shots, and since I had lots of team experience, I carefully led the crew into the middle of a team tied up on the edge of town. The dogs were excited, but cautious of us, except for one big old white dog. He nuzzled up to me, and he wanted to be petted, and he wouldn't leave me alone. Later, as we sat drinking tea with the owner, the crew remarked on this dog. I asked the owner what his name was, and he said, Oh, I've never given him a name. I got him from some, from some lady in Yellowknife. Suddenly it clicked. I said, watch this. I opened the door, leaned out, and yelled, Homer! The dog immediately jumped up and barked at me. Eight years, and after being shuffled all across the north, Homer remembered me, even though I didn't remember him. And... I think that's it. <laughs> well, there's one more picture somewhere. Oh, yes. <laughs> And occasionally this guy borrows my team to get some ground level training before he has to do his major uh, flight on Christmas Eve. Thank you.